Hey everybody, Dr. Michael Bruce, The Sleep Doctor here, and welcome to my bedroom. Yep, Rachel said we wanted to take a look in your bedroom, Dr. Bruce, and see what's in there and how we can all get a great night's sleep. So one of the things that I like to do is I look at a bedroom and I look at it based on the five senses. Sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. Light can have a dramatic effect on your sleep. If this light is too bright at night, it can absolutely positively affect your ability to fall asleep and produce something called melatonin. Remember, melatonin is that key that starts the engine for sleep. So we wanna have good light. Now, generally speaking, you want your bulbs to be around 40 watts, or you can install a dimmer switch. Also, they now make these specialty light bulbs that have a filter on the inside that filters out the blue light. My favorite tricks is blue light blocking glasses. So they look a little funky, but the truth of the matter is, is they block out the blue light. Check them out. Be careful, you wanna get the amber lenses and make sure that they've been approved by a sleep specialist. A lot of times people think, when they think sound, they think earplugs, right? So maybe you've got a noisy bed partner, a sleeping bulldog, something along those lines. So when you're looking at earplugs, I'm always telling people you want to get the foamy kind, and if you can, get them noise level rated at 32 or below. This way you can still hear the smoke alarm, but hopefully drown out the noise of maybe a snoring bed partner. One of the newest things that I recently found, it's an app called Restflix. It's pretty amazing. They've got channels of different kinds of sounds and these beautiful visual seascapes. So what I've been doing lately is I've got my blue light blocking glasses on and I watch these and they're very soothing. As far as touch is concerned, we get a good pillow, we get some good cotton sheets, so we get a good thermoregulation. Cotton has a tendency to be incredibly breathable, absorb perspiration, things of that nature. So when you're looking for thermoregulation, look at your sheets because they could have a lot to do with it. Finally, let's talk about smell. Now, that might not be the easiest topic to talk about in a bedroom, um, but my favorite thing are these little aromatherapy sachets. Toss them inside a pillow and we get our own little aromatherapy. Big thing to remember about aromatherapy, by the way, candles and sleep don't mix. Bedtime snack. When we're talking about snacks, remember you shouldn't go to bed hungry, but you certainly shouldn't go to bed full. We're talking about a 250 calorie snack or so. I've got so many people who say, Dr. Bruce, I wake up at 237, what should I do? Guava leaf tea. Not guava fruit, not guava juice, but guava leaf tea. It keeps blood sugar stable throughout the night. There's actually a research study on it. Just keep it simple. No sugar, no caffeine, about 70% carbs, about 30% protein. This is Dr. Michael Bruce wishing you sweet dreams. I think it's become a, more of a challenge for all Americans, uh, for people all over the world, quite frankly, because it's been such right. a stressful time in 2020. How have our sleep patterns been affected by this very unusual year? So we've definitely seen a change in overall sleep patterns. A couple of statistics I can throw at you, which are interesting. Prescription sleeping medication is up by 30% during wow. COVID. 30%, right? Wow. I mean, alcohol sales are up by, I think, close to 30%. Caffeine consumption is up, right? So what's, ha what's happening is people are falling out of their schedules, right? People are sleeping later, staying up later. That's throwing everything off. If people could have one thing for me, just one piece of advice, wake up at the same time every single morning. It sets your circadian clock. It sets up your day, allows you to kind of know what's happening, and then your body knows what to do. That's such a simple fix. Try yeah. and get up every day, seven days a week, right? Even weekends. Seven days a week. What I tell people all the time is, it's, is consistency helps lower stress, and lower stress leads to more productivity. So if we're working from home and we can get up at the same time, we know what our day is going to look like every single day. So there's no stress. So we lower that stress, we can become more productive.